Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dan Brent. I'm Vice President of Finance and Operations here at William James College. And I'm here with Hillary Baxter, our Director of Financial Aid. And we will take you through our presentation uh, this afternoon about financial aid at William James College. We like to make this as interactive as possible. So please ask any questions. Um, it would be quite boring if you're going to listen to the two of us uh, speak for the next half hour. So um, please feel free to ask a question at any time. All right, Hillary, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, looks like for some reason the polls aren't up again. So I will turn it over to you. Okay. Hi, everyone. So as Dan said, my name is Hillary Baxter. I'm the Director of Financial Aid. And the number one question of financial aid that we get is, how can I pay for this? So some of the different types of aid are listed here, such as scholarships, employer reimbursement, federal work study, and both federal and private loans. Each department awards the merit-based scholarships, and there's no separate application for most of them. You'll automatically be considered for these funds through the admissions process, and if you're awarded, you'll be notified on your acceptance letter from admissions, and it'll also be included on your financial aid award letter if you've submitted your FAFSA. The other scholarships listed here do have some specific requirements, though, so please be sure to look at our website for more information on these ones, or you can reach out directly to admissions. This slide here has some sites that you can go on to to look for outside scholarships that might be available. Um, but I do have to say, unfortunately, they're kind of limited at the graduate level. Um, if we do hear of any that pertain to our student body, though, I'll definitely let you know through email. Um, so now on to applying for federal financial aid. So if you've never submitted the FAFSA before, which is the free application for federal student aid, you'll first need to create a, an FSA ID and password, which you can do by going on to studentaid.gov. Once that's set up, you can submit your FAFSA and you can either search for William James by name or by using our federal code listed here. We'll automatically get your results within about three to five days and if you've never, and sorry, if you've been admitted to the school, we'll then follow up with an award letter. If you're given the option to when submitting the FAFSA, we strongly recommend that you use the IRS data retrieval tool, which will automatically pull in your tax information and it'll save you time in both um, you know, errors in like typing in the information. Um, I had mentioned work study before, which is a federal fund that can be earned while you're in school. Um, if that's something that you think you might be interested in, there's a place on the FAFSA that asks if you're interested and you just need to put yes as long as you have a need based on the information from your FAFSA. We'd automatically include a $7,500 allowance in work study that you can earn up to for the year. Um, students are working in all different departments throughout the school and the positions are posted on CareerLink as they become available. The um, new students will be given access to career link once classes begin in the fall or in the spring if you apply for January. Um, work study is money that gets paid directly to you and does not get credited to your bill. And most students tend to work about eight to 10 hours a week depending on the needs of the department and um, positions pay $16 an hour currently. We also have some TA positions which aren't through work study. They're actually just arranged through the academic departments and you can find out about um, both teaching assistantship positions and work study by going onto this link on our website. I also just want to mention um, the slides are attached here, so I know I'm mentioning links and all that kind of stuff. So um, if I'm going too quickly, you can always go back and access these links later on. And um, Dan, are there any questions so far? Nothing yet. Quiet audience so far. Okay. Um, so as I said, submitting the FAFSA is the first step in applying for federal loans and grants. And this slide shows some of the federal funds that you'd be considered for depending on your program, your level of need, and the cost of attendance. The Stafford loan, which is for both undergrad and grad students, has both annual and lifetime limits, which you'll see on the next slide. You can get additional aid on top of this loan up to your cost of attendance each year, which I'll get into later. Um, here are the requirements for the Stafford loan. You must be a U.S. citizen or permanent resident. You have to be at least half time in a degree seeking program and you must be making satisfactory academic progress. The interest rates and loan fees tend to change yearly, but you can find the current ones on studentaid.gov. 
The annual and lifetime limits are also listed at the bottom of the screen. So if you're accepted by admissions, we do have your FAFSA. We'll follow up with you within about seven to 10 days. The award letter you receive will, will include any loans, scholarships, and work study funds you've been awarded. The letter also includes an estimated budget and options to cover remaining expenses through additional loans, which would either be through the Grad Plus loan or private loans. In order to accept the Stafford loan, all you need to do is sign and return the award letter you receive and complete the two steps listed here. The other loan that I had mentioned before is a federal Grad Plus loan. You must be a credit-worthy applicant, and if you have any concerns about your credit, we suggest that you check your credit report now just to avoid any issues once the classes begin. The Plus loan has both a higher interest rate and origination fee, and if you're approved, you would be able to request up to your overall cost of attendance minus all other aids from this loan. The current interest rate and origination fee is on this slide, but as I mentioned before, it's subject to change for next year. Your cost of attendance includes both direct and indirect costs. Direct costs are things that you'll actually be charged for, such as tuition and fees and the health insurance plan, which you can waive if you already have insurance. And indirect costs would be things such as books, living expenses, transportation, etc. pretty much any other expenses that you might need to cover through loans while you're in school. This next slide here shows an estimated cost for a current master's student taking 15 credits each semester. If your credits are different, your tuition will change, but everything else would pretty much be the same. Again, you might not need to cover all of these expenses, such as living expenses, but it would depend on your individual situation. We ask that you come up with a budget and borrow only what you need. Um, so as you can see on this slide, all aid can only go up to your cost of attendance, which includes the budget items I mentioned on the previous slide. The things at the bottom are considered self-help aid and would be factored into your cost of attendance first. You can then get the Stafford loan and then the maximum plus loan amount you can request would be the difference between the total cost of attendance and all other aids. We ask that you wait to submit your plus loan request until you know how much you'll actually need to cover your costs so that you don't request too much. Um, private loans are another option, but if you're eligible for federal loans, we do strongly encourage you to use them or to look into them at least due to the repayment options that are currently available. Um, Dan's actually going to talk about that next. However, if you do want to look into private loans, you can go onto this site listed here, elmselect.com, um, but keep in mind that you'll likely need a co-signer who's a U.S. citizen. Any questions on this stuff so far? All right, we got one so far, Hillary. Um, okay. I plan to borrow for tuition and for living expenses. How will I receive the money for the living expenses? That's a good question. So each semester, um, we would process aid that you've requested. We would do one final check before, or sorry, after ad drop to make sure that you haven't been over awarded. And all aid that you've requested will then be posted to your student account to cover your charges. And at that point, if you're, if you, if, sorry, if it results in a credit balance on your account, that amount would be refunded to you for the semester, and that's the money that you'd use for your living expenses, books, or whatever you need to get through the semester. So that will happen um, three times during the year, uh, like I said, after ad drops each semester. Please don't be shy. We like questions. Yep. All right, um, I guess I will take over the next phase, talk about uh, what happens after graduation. So uh, once you graduate William James College, um, there's a six month grace period, and then you will have to start um, paying back your loans. Um, please to present, to present this slide. The government measures our uh, default rate over a three year period, and 1.1% uh, of students that entered the repayment period um, over over this last three years defaulted on their loans and the national average is 7.3 percent so we like to see those numbers 
and I will explain later why we think that's true. Um, so there are several different types of repayment options. Uh, one is loan consolidation. Uh, this enables you to combine your undergraduate debt with your graduate debt and lock in uh, one interest rate because your interest rates will be different depending on um, which year you borrowed because they change every year. Uh, we always encourage you to check out the NSLDS system um, to see what your loans are. You also have a, a loan servicer, which you'll be able to look up in there. That's a third party. Um, so standard repayment is 10 years. Um, most of our graduates opt for um, income-based repayment because uh, many of our students in, at, you know, go into the clinical PsyD program, which is five years or uh, counseling or school psychology, which is also multiple years. And these programs um, allow you to pay off your debt over a period of 25 years based on your income. Um, so very popular programs. Students, we always encourage students to check out um, any changes to government plans because they're always uh, talking about changes. Um, so that program I just talked about is really the repay program. This allows you to pay 10% of your discretionary income for a period of 25 years. And after 25 years, your loan will be, will be uh, forgiven. And right now it's also tax free um, as part of one of the um, um, COVID-19 acts that just uh, Congress went, went through right now. Many of our students also qualify for public service loan forgiveness. So if you work for a nonprofit or a government agency um, then, and you work for 10 years, then you can combine income-based repayment and public service loan forgiveness and pay off your debt over 10 years. And that'll be uh, forgiven after 10 years. It's also tax-free. So what kind of uh, work qualifies for that? Students who go into nonprofit human service providers, um, some nonprofit hospitals, government agencies like prisons or schools um, or colleges, universities like William James College is a nonprofit. Many of our employees qualify for this program. So many of our students take advantage of this um, great program. And for more information, we encourage you to check out studentaid.gov um, because there are many different loan repayment plans out there right now. Uh, there's also a couple of specialized programs, one with the state of Massachusetts, and one with the federal government. Again, these links are in the handouts. Uh, these are tailored towards uh, mental health. And uh, going back to that slide about a low default rate, um, we have a um, we have almost a 90% graduation rate. I think it's 88 or 89 um, average across all programs. For those who are interested in the clinical PsyD program, 89% uh, of our alumni passed the uh, exam on the first try, and 94% of our alumni um, secure a job uh, within, the, within the first six months. So um, students graduate, they find jobs, they pass the exam, and they're able to pay off their debt, um, which, which is great. We'd like to hear that. Um, and we're almost coming to the end, uh, so please, you know, ask some questions. We've got these websites up here, uh, finaid.org and studentaid.gov, for more uh, information about our about repayment plans that are out there. Quiet audience, Hillary, today. Oh, very. Yeah, I mean, as I said before, it's a lot of information to take in. We we went through it quickly, but um. You know, here, here's our contact information. If anything comes up in the meantime, or like I said, the slides are attached, you can always refer back to those. And um, if those don't answer your questions, you can reach out to me, to Phyllis, admissions, whoever. Yeah, we, we know that, you know, financial aid is different for every uh, student. So, you know, please feel free to reach out directly with any questions um, specifically to you. We, we try to do things, um, you know, generic to everybody, but we know everyone has different needs. So uh, please feel free to reach out to us.
beautiful picture of our campus right now. Looks a little bit differently outside. If you uh, have a chance to come by, we're actually uh, replacing our windows right now. Should be uh, phase one should be wrapped up uh, by the time classes start in August. Just in case you're coming by the building. All right, if we don't have any more questions, we uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon and we look forward to seeing you on campus. Have a great day. Thank you.